Hello, I am Fabio Rambelli and I teach Japanese religions and cultural history here at the University of California, Santa Barbara. I have the enormous pleasure to announce the start of the Critical Intervention Lab on Gagaku, cultural capital, cultural heritage and cultural identity. Unfortunately, uh, we have not been able to do this in person here on campus uh, as we originally planned. Uh, so we have decided uh, to make the most out of available online technologies by offering a rich and varied program. We have uh, pre-recorded lectures with written translations and videos of performances by important Gagaku ensembles with commentaries by their directors. We also have organized three online workshops in which scholars from Japan will present and discuss live with the audience primary sources. And finally, we have scheduled a general discussion where presenters and guests will ask questions and discuss the issues presented at the conference. Now, the choice of Gagaku as the theme of this uh, critical intervention lab is not random, but uh, it still deserves some explanation. It begins with my astonishment at realizing that Gagaku music and Bugaku dance were essential components of rituals and ceremonies, not only at the Imperial Court of Japan, but also and especially at temples and shrines throughout Japanese history. Scholarship has created an image of um, Japanese religions as, and especially Buddhism as mostly silent. But in fact, the soundscape of temples and shrines was incredibly rich and varied and Gagaku was often at its center. In addition, the scholarship on Gagaku has changed dramatically over the past 20 years or so. It moved away from traditional musicology, focused primarily on organology, scales and rhythm patterns, um, to tread deeply in intellectual history, social history and cultural history. Many of the protagonists of this intellectual turn are presenting at this conference. Thanks to them, Gagaku is no longer the lofty and semi-secret music of a small and isolated elite, but a much wider phenomenon that involved many people throughout Japan over many centuries. In the presentations, we will hear about the transmission of music scores and the retrieval of ancient scores to reconstruct old lost repertory, but also about the original diffusion of Bugaku that already started in the Middle Ages about the massive adoption of Gagaku by samurai in the Edo period, from the Tokugawa family down to regional daimyo and their retainers, about the professional musicians from the three official Gagaku academies in Kansai, at the Imperial Court in Kyoto, uh, Shitennoji in Osaka, and at Kofukujikaska in Nara, and their extensive networks of disciples all over Japan, disciples that included samurai, Buddhist monks, Shinto priests, and even commoners. We will hear about the fascination for Gagaku by all the leading Confucian intellectuals of the Tokugawa period, um, people such as Ogyu Sarai, Kai Barekken, Kunazawa Banzan, Tominaga Nakamoto, and many others. They all wrote about the philosophy of Gagaku and were all performers at some Gagaku instruments. We will also hear of the dramatic transformations that Gagaku went through in relation to the Meiji religious policies uh, uh, of uh, Shinbutsu Bundi, the separation of Shinto from Buddhism, and about the worldwide diffusion of Gagaku after the Second World War. Gagaku is indeed the only kind of non-European music that has attracted a profound and sustained interest by composers and performers all over the world. We will also find out that one of the centers for such worldwide diffusion of Gagaku is California. It is here in Santa Barbara, Los Angeles and San Francisco that composers were exposed to it. And it is here where Japanese Americans have performed it since at least the 1930s, if not earlier. Making of California the only place outside Japan where Gagaku has attained a sort of native presence. It is perhaps appropriate that the first large conference on Gagaku to be organized outside of Japan in decades takes place here in Santa Barbara, where, in an important sense, the global interest for Gagaku began in the early 1900s with composer and performer Henry Eichheim. We hope that all the materials posted online for this critical intervention lab will become the source for studying and teaching about Gagaku in the United States and globally. 
Finally, I would like to extend my gratitude to all the people and agencies that have made this critical intervention lab possible. The Japan Foundation Institutional Project Support Grant, whose administrator is my colleague, Professor Sabine Frühstück, support from many agencies at the University of California, Santa Barbara, too many to list them here, the presenters who kindly accepted to devote their time and find time to join us online in the middle of a global pandemic. To my team of students who have helped me with the organization, technical support and translation, and have even begun to learn Gagaku instruments, and to the participants from all over the world. Thank you all. One last word. Gagaku has survived, often against all odds, for many centuries, went through changes and transformations, but it is still here with us, now available to an even larger public. At this time, after more than a year of a pandemic that has claimed countless lives and has disrupted the lives of all of us, I do think that Gagaku brings a message of resilience and hope. Please join us and enjoy this critical intervention lab on Gagaku, cultural capital, cultural heritage and cultural identity. <laughs>